Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Better Late Than Never. I mean, the Gibson Mod Shop Collection update. It is Friday. Uh, had some issues this week, but you don't care about that. You care about the Gibson Mod Shop Collection, which I'm about to show you right now. Right after I tell you something you probably already know. But Gibson, this week, re-released, so to speak, or reimagined slightly the Gibson Les Paul Studio. They're calling it the one, I guess, even though it doesn't really say it here. You get they're sixteen hundred dollars. They're all sixteen hundred dollars. I thought these were different a different price. Hmm. Like the figured ones. Anyway, uh Cherry Sunburst, which is yeah. And they have the mahogany body, mahogany neck, plain maple cap, blah 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 blah. Uh, bound fretboard, which is something different. Rosewood fretboard, slim taper profile, and Burst Bucker Pro pickups with you know the uh, modern coil splitting tapping stuff that you get like on the uh, well used to get on the classic. They don't make the classic anymore. I guess this is taking the classic's place. So sixteen hundred dollars, Cherry Sunburst, Wine Red. Blueberry Burst, which is interesting, and it has a blue back instead of a black back. Nice. And Ebony. Now, to me, an Ebony guitar should have, and this is a satin finish on this one, which I could have sworn. Maybe they dropped the prices, but I thought the satin finish was the one that was 1600 and the other ones were a little bit more because they weren't a satin finish. They were gloss, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but... Ebony guitar should have a white pickguard, I think. It just looks, to me, it just looks strange. But anyway, that's the Les Paul Modern. Go check it out, you know, Gibson.com, or, uh, you know, wait for them to show up on Reverb, or uh, the, um, the uh, <laughs> what's it called? All I can think of is Mod Shop. That's not right. Demo Shop, because I'm sure if they haven't already been there, they'll, they will be some there. But to continue our journey... Let's start with the mod shop for this week. 1958 Les Paul Standard Reissue in Dark Sparkling Burgundy. Sparkle, sparkle. Let's see how much it sparkles. We got uncovered pickups. We got chrome hardware. Looks like we got the speed knobs not notched. That is definitely a dark finish. Not as dark as Oxblood, but pretty close. Nice rosewood fretboard. Thirsty, of course. I kind of like it. Eh. A little dark, maybe. The back is nice. Got some nice wood grain there. Nice mahogany back. And you get the tuners that I kind of like. Yeah, Ooh, double ringed. Ooh. Okay, okay, this might be... Okay, you can kind of see the sparkle in this, in this uh, photo here. You can also see a lot of scratches and a really crappy bound line. Good lord. But uh, that's pretty shoddy, actually. <laughs> and look at that screw head. That's almost, that's like stripped almost, or like on its way. Good heavens. Ay, ay, ay. Anyway, you get the bound fretboard with the fret nibs, and this picture is horrible what the hell i mean i know you're trying to show us this but maybe they did something to so that that imperfection shows up because that's not what it looks like i hope not all that white that'd be weird Get a nice case all right how much is this okay so we have one problem we have the 1958 we have a number and we have the word reissue and despite the crappy finish on the one side and whatnot those two things put together, we're going with. I'm changing it. I'm changing it. it used to say at least five, but I'm gonna I'm gonna change it to at least four and a half. I'll say forty eight hundred dollars. Damn, should have left it at forty five. Okay, forty six hundred dollars. And remember, it's forty six hundred dollars with this. <laughs> Gibson, you're 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 crazy. Okay, you're crazy. Anyway, 
let's take a deeper dive into this 2024 Gibson Custom 1958 Les Paul Standard reissue. Dark sparkling burgundy, which it does. It does. Sparkle, sparkle. That's terrible. Sparkle, sparkle. That's better. Modifications consist of the exclusive finish, custom bucker pickups, black speed knobs. It weighs 9.05 pounds. A hair over 9 pounds. A bit much, I think. But it's it's pretty. Another one that probably looks better in person. Why in the world would you want to show your guitar in the best light when you're trying to sell it? I don't know. <laughs> Next, we have one of the rare bass guitars in the mod shop this week. I think we had one... Was that last week? Or maybe two weeks before that. I forget. Anyway, they come along every once in a while. Non-reverse Thunderbird. Oh, another sparkle. Freedom sparkle. Sparkle, sparkle. This one definitely, definitely sparkles. Now, is this line here? That's supposed to be there? Okay. Is this a lefty? No. I, I say that because if you notice, the Firebird is up there. Huh. Or is that a non-reverse thing? Is this a lefty? Let's take a deeper dive. Okay, so they call it Freedom Sparkle. Have you noticed what I noticed? Do you see what I see? We have the American flag embedded in there. Should have saved this one for the 4th of July. I mean, <laughs> did Lee Greenwood order this for his bass player and then decide not to get it? Don't look at him. What is that shady part there? What is that? That fuzzy part was on the front, too. If I got the guitar and it had that, I'd be a bit upset. That's not a lefty. Right? Yeah, that's not a lefty. That's weird. Whoa. What do my eyes be seeing me here? Good lord, that's a gouge. Heavens, the Murgatroyd. Okay. There you go. Big nice gouge out of your out of your guitar and out of the fretboard too. Those frets look like they're ready to pop right out. The sides. Fret sprout, I think is what it's called. Okay, so we have a non-reverse Thunderbird Freedom Sparkle. Sparkle, sparkle. It definitely sparkles. It's got the American flag on it. Uh, Maybe it's, maybe I just don't know. That's possible. And I, I admit it freely. Uh, maybe the Firebird is on that side of a non-reverse. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Say, Brian, you're stupid. Or, Brian, you're so smart. Anyway, oh, $2,700 for that gouge. <laughs> and those interesting pickups. Uh, it's 2022. I've been sitting around for, f f I almost said four years. <laughs> Two years. Non-reverse Thunderbird base. Freedom Sparkle. That's the exclusive custom finish. Thunderbird reissue pickups with stars and stripes motif, a transparent pick guard and knobs. Oh, the knobs are transparent as well. Yes, yes, they are. Yes. Clear knobs. You can't just say clear. It weighs 7.65 pounds, which probably isn't bad for a base. Yep, Thunderbird reissue. Uh I I have no opinion on this. It's it's okay. Eh. Next. Ooh. Okay. 1959. Les Paul Standard Reissue. Saffron Sunstripe. All right. There's one for the Lispers. Okay. Getting Spotlight Special vibes. So a Spotlight Special mixed with a greeny, maybe? A little dark for the Appetite Burst. But it looks like we got the Dirty Fingers. I'm guessing that the stripes, based on where the wood grain is, is just where they didn't spray it with the finish. Interesting. Okay. Doesn't seem extra special. Eh, maybe a little bit. That's a great looking top. I like the darker hue. We got the black speed knobs and, you know, the black uncovered pickups, dirty fingers. 
and it looks like we're gonna have a dark back on this but that is a pretty nice that is a pretty nice top I like that definitely okay I like that yep black back or oh, well mmm satin the satin back I'm not sure what to call that color though really dark red or eggplant or something maybe hmm I wonder if they'll identify it we got a DS serial number on this one what do we have 196 196 you can kind of see that color there it's not quite an ebony back and it's not quite a dark red it's interesting okay yeah messed up there messed up there not too bad not too bad oh wait let's go back to that one because you can see well okay you can't really see but yeah I'm pretty sure that that stripe is just basically where they didn't put I hope there's they didn't put a finish over it so I, I mean I'm, I hope there's some sort of <laughs> protective coating I'm sure that the nitrocellulose is over all of it so okay we've got a pretty nice looking guitar dirty fingers pickups it's a 59 reissue so you know the price boom 59 is one of those special numbers forty eight hundred dollars at least saffron sunstripe what do we got fifty one hundred dollars 2024 1959 Les Paul standard reissue saffron sunstripe dirty fingers double ring tuners uh, yeah you got dirty fingers in the neck and dirty fingers plus in the bridge there you go I, th I should look up the numbers on those their their output readings I'm pretty sure the dirty fingers are ceramic aren't they so they should have like double digit outputs for the bridge at least especially with a with you know dirty fingers plus weighs eight and a quarter pounds that's that's a good weight for a guitar I like this one don't like the price shocking I know next oh by the way we have eight sorry and uh, there's four left I think at the time of recording next up we have Les Paul access custom Lake freeze perimeter okay I like the name already and you know how I like a blue guitar we got the gold top hat knobs I believe we got a Floyd Rose of course it's an access gold hardware no poker chip I'm digging this top and the color is not bad definitely got an ebony fretboard there with the fret nebs I like saying fret nebs whoa here's that back again that's kind of the same color actually this one's a little lighter but you get the apex head carve apex apex heart head carve satin back that's an interesting color too and if my eyes do not deceive me we have yet another DS number 202 is this our first two or 200 how would you say that our first 200 and above whatever <laughs> uh I think so that almost looked like it said 1400 above it that's mod mod <laughs> yeah we got dings I really like that blue that's nice I'd like to see this one in person for sure not a fan of Floyd roses not that I hate them they just they have uh, <laughs> extra work to do with the guitar when you have a Floyd Rose uh, setups and whatnot are not as uh, string changes <laughs> are not as easy anyway $4,800 oh, this one's gone not surprised like I said half of them are 2024 Les Paul access custom Lake freeze perimeter modifications consist of the exclusive custom finish open coil 496R and 500T in the neck and bridge respectively kidney button tuner kidney button tuners oh yeah okay yeah yeah the kid when it said button tuners I was thinking of those little white horrible things but no I, I get it okay kidney button tuners Grovers and it weighs and gold top hat knobs are right yeah it weighs eight and a half pounds not a bad weight at all no special electronics uh yeah nice looking guitar in the front 
I, I kind of like the back. Yeah, that that red or plum. What are we calling it? Not bad, but uh, forty eight hundred dollars. Mm. No thanks. Next. Ooh, green. Next to a blue guitar, I love a green guitar. Funny enough, I don't own either color in any of my guitars. I don't think. Do I? No. What is that? No, oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I got distracted. Squirrel. 1957 Les Paul Custom Reissue. We got a 1957. We got the word reissue. So up the price. ka -ching! Deep Kelp Satin. Loving this color. Ba-doing. Oh, and you can see the... Oh, it's a 57, so that's most likely a mahogany top with the gold hardware. You can see the wood grain. Liking that. Multiply binding, top hat knobs. Yeah, okay. This one's looking pretty good so far. I'm wondering about the back. What did they do to the back? Full on refin? Hmm. What? What? What would I like to see? I think on this, I'd like to see either a natural back or kind of like opposite color. Now, given that it's called deep kelp satin, a nice ocean blue on the back would be interesting. But I don't think either of those are right. I think it's going to be a dark back. Oh, no. Full on refin. Green everywhere. Brian was wrong yet again. And again, I believe we have a satin back here. You can see the wood grain, which would be interesting. I, I'm digging this color. And it's a custom. And it is one, 149, I believe. And it looks like somebody got their hair caught <laughs> in the tuner there. Do you see it there? Somebody got their hair caught. Ouch! That would, that would hurt, actually. Or is that part of the aging process? <laughs> I'm terrible. I know. Shame on me. Yep. Yep. Okay. So now you can really see that open grain, I believe. Yeah. I'd like to see this one in person to see what it really looks like. Custom case. Of course. So, 1957, reissue. So, if I remember correctly, the 57 is the one with the mahogany top. It looks like a mahogany top. I'm going to go, actually, a little lower than I think it is. Uh, 40, 4,300. 4,400. 4,400. Damn. <laughs> I went the wrong direction. $5,800. It is a 2024 1957 Les Paul custom reissue. Deep Kelt sat Satin finish. It's got satin all over it. Okay, so it's not a high gloss. It's not a, See that? It's not a high gloss. $5,800. Okay? Okay. It's not a special wood put on top of another, you know, special wood. You know, there's no maple cap. It's just all mahogany. Keep that in mind. Two piece, maybe one piece. I don't know. Uh, ABR1 Tunematic Bridge with Titanium Saddles. Yeehaw! Top hat knobs, 7.9, a hair under 8 pounds. That's a light guitar. Did it say weight relief? It does not. Body, mahogany, neck. You have the ebony board, of course. It does not say it's weight relief. Huh. That is a light piece of, uh, piece of mahogany. That's a light guitar, 7.9. Yeah, that's a light guitar. Uh, uh, custom Bucker Alnico 3s in this beast. And for $5,800, you can have it. Or you can buy a car. We got three left. Here we go. We have an Epiphone. Okay, a bass and an Epiphone. Wow, that's a red lighter date. Do, 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 do. That is an interesting trapeze piece. I don't think I've ever seen a tailpiece like that. Epiphone USA Casino Gold Moonlight Mist. I am digging this color. Definitely. Although, <laughs> uh, forgive me, I forget the name. Somebody last week, I was talking about one of the guitars last week, 
and I said it looked like somebody had left a, a piece of cheese, a kind of when when you you have a piece of like uh, craft singles or whatever, and the wrapper comes off a little bit, or you leave the the little uh, Publix bag or whatever Kroger bag, uh, Meyer bag, whatever, open a little bit, and the and the air hits the edge of the cheese and it turns it that sort of darker color. <laughs> That's what this guitar, the outer rim of this guitar from last week. Uh, looks like, and someone said, "Oh, it's aged cheese burst." <laughs> That's great. Uh, this looks like uh, you took the wrapper off completely, and the cheese has turned <laughs> to this lovely gold color. I- I'm actually really digging this color. I wonder if cream uh, pickup covers would have looked better on this. Hmm, with the Waller's tooth, maybe. Probably they don't probably put Waller's teeth on there. But I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm digging this color, and the wood grain underneath just works with it. And I don't think I've ever seen a vibrato system like this, huh? Is that over? Yeah, wrap over. Anyway, you get the P94s, you get a nice looking rosewood fretboard. Thirsty, of course. And I'm betting uh, with the black reflector knobs. Ta-da. I'm guessing full-on refin, except for that neck. That it still just jars me every time I see it. I know this is typical on an ES guitar or a casino. That is a gorgeous back. Loving this color. Would love to see that on, on a Les Paul. And then you get a natural, well, not natural, but you get a satin neck. But that color difference, whoo, shocking. Alrighty then. <clears throat> Tis an Epiphone, but made in the USA. Looks like it's a 2022, I believe. Oh, with the black, uh, the ebony sides, black sides. That's pretty cool. That's a nice side profile. Digging that. Okay, I want to see this one in person. That F hole doesn't look quite right. On the edge there, I see the the divot. You know, somebody sneezed too hard. Boing. <laughs> nice big case for it. This is this is a pretty, this is a gorgeous guitar. I love the the, the look of this guitar. What is that trapeze piece called? It is thirty one hundred dollars. It's gone. Not surprised. Not surprised in the least. Twenty twenty one. What did I say? Twenty two. That's weird. Maybe they do their USA serial numbers different. Do they do their USA serial numbers like Gibson? Let's see, that would be 214th day of 2021, 0, 0, Well, maybe. Because on, <coughs> excuse me, on regular, regular or Chinese uh, Epiphones, the first two digits are the, uh, the year, I think. And maybe completely bonkers on that anyway 2021 gold moon or moonlight mist finish let's try that again gold moonlight mist finish love this finish modifications consist of the exclusive custom finish walnut sides wow okay that's cool uh and neck so the next walnut where's that just the color let's see Neck material, mahogany. Okay, so that's just the color. They didn't give you a maho- or, uh, a walnut uh, neck or sides. It's just the color. Okay. Grover tuners, kidney buttons, trem- Whoa. tremotone, tremotone, tailpiece, no pickguard, black top hat knobs, silver reflectors, blah, 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 blah. Ooh, what's that? It also has a small piece of tape run through the strings behind the bridge in order to dampen sympathetic rena- <laughs> sounds. <laughs> it weighs six and three quarters pounds, so it is definitely a light guitar. P90s, no special electronics. This one's interesting, and I'm not surprised that somebody got it. Congratulations. Next, we still got two left. 1959, Les Paul Standard Reissue, Ebony Fox. Sparkle, sparkle. Let's see how much sparkle is in this guitar. 
I think we're going to see a lot. It doesn't look like a gloss finish, though. Why would you do a guitar with a sparkle finish and give it a satin uh, finish on top? Looks like we got dirty fingers. Everything's so blacked out on this. Blacked out chrome hardware. You get a rosewood board instead of an ebony board, which is, would just be more blacked out. And, the, of course, the back is... Wow, this is a dark guitar. Still not seeing the sparkle. Not seeing a serial number either. Interesting. Okay, this is kind of like that, um... Oh, I'm going to forget the name of it. I, I am forgetting the name of it. It was a uh, Guitar Center or a Sam Ash exclusive where it was just everything was just blacked out. Everything. The guitar looked like a void. <laughs> you know, everything was was black or ebony or whatever. Okay, I kind of see the sparkle there. So in the light, this guitar is going to look gray, I think. And they stamped it with a black stamp and this one's ds0201 so this is one before that other one which was 202 cool get them both <laughs> uh yeah that's a terrible picture you can kind of see it here maybe this guitar i think well first of all looks like it got dirty and just I mean, look, there's no finish there at all between the pick car or the pickup ring. <laughs> Did somebody hurt themselves? That looks like blood. <sighs> and of course, you get there. What's what's with this weird angle for the case? <laughs> somebody get bored over there taking pictures? Don't get bored. Take better pictures. This guitar, I I, I really think this guitar. The pictures are not doing it justice. I think this one's more interesting in person than it is in these photographs. So, $5,700. It better be a hell of a lot more interesting in person. No wonder it's still there, right? Oh, yeah, still there. 2024, 1959, Les Paul Standard reissue. Ebony Fox Sparkle Finish. I don't get the fox. Barely get the sparkle. Modifications consist of the finish, which is kind of, at least in the pictures. Like I said, I think it would look a lot better in person. Black nickel hardware, black plastics, black, 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 black. Two nomadic bridge, black speed knobs. No picker. Dirty fingers in the neck and dirty fingers plus in the bridge. Nine and a half pounds, almost a chunky monkey. Eight ounces off. No fancy electronics. Uh, yeah. First of all, the guitar is way overpriced. Second of all, these pictures are just not doing this guitar justice. Sorry, little guitar. And last and certainly not least, we have a 70s Explorer in Jaw Buster. I am still just now seeing this for the first time. I didn't look at these even though I'm two days late. That has a texture to it for sure. That... The closer I get to it, the worse it looks. This looks like the linoleum back at school. <laughs> or like a 70s countertop, although it is a 70s Explorer, so... It's it's intriguing. Now, we got the UFO knobs. Perloid pickguard, which... Yeah... Well, I was going to say no pick guard, and then I was going to say maybe a black pick guard would have brought out more of the of the black flake or the like the darker green that's in here. Had the pick guard be that color and have the pickup rings be the black or the lighter green maybe. I'm not sure about this guitar. For some reason, I'm sitting here thinking the the guy from uh Cheap Trick. The guitar player from Cheap Trick would probably like this guitar. I don't know why I think that. I know he has some wild guitars. Should I tell a quick Cheap Trick story that I have? Should I? We're 30 minutes. Uh, 
All right, real quick. We're quick. Uh, I saw Cheap Trick, uh, like, dual headline. They weren't opening, uh, but, like, I'll say dual headlining with uh, uh, Aerosmith back on the mm, Just Push Play or Nine Lives. I think it was Nine Lives or, or one of those. Anyway, <laughs> so the uh, the band started, and this is the way it was for every song. The band started, you know, they all sang, or the, the singer came out, sang the song, blah, blah, blah. Song ends, the, sting, the singer runs off stage, the guitar player walks up to, <laughs> the bowling ball finish, uh, <laughs> it just popped in my head. The guitar player walked up to the, uh, the microphone and did all the, like, you know, banter, the crowd banter. And would, you know, introduce the next song or start playing it or whatever. And the singer would come back on stage, sing the song, and rinse rather than repeat. So I just thought that was, that's strange. I hope he wasn't, like, having a problem with his voice or something. But it just seemed really strange. And this guitar, <laughs> I'm not, I, I am going back and forth on this guitar. I'm not sure how I feel about it. It's, it's a 70s explorer they didn't do the headstock okay that's interesting uh yeah i i keep thinking bowling ball now uh, <laughs> bowling ball finish jaw buster uh, it doesn't really give me jawbreaker but anyway 3100 dollars. it's still there it's an it, it's interesting i think this would be this this says '80s to me more than it says '70s. The finish, anyway. I know the the layout is is '70s, whatever. So thirty one hundred dollars, twenty twenty four '70s Explorer Jawbuster finish, which is just it's the most interesting finish that we've seen tonight, I think. Uh, Burst Bucker three bridge pickup, uh, Burst Bucker in the neck. Okay, I said those backwards. I'm sorry. White Perloid pickguard uh, UFO knobs. Black toggle switch tip nine pounds. Okay, there here down here it says burst bucker two and burst bucker three. That does not say that up there. Yeah, it says burst bucker neck and burst bucker three bridge. Oopsie. No fancy electronics. Definitely one to write home to mama. That is an interesting finish. Bowling ball finish. That is that's my favorite bowling ball. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> anyway, all right, all right. So my pick for this week, as I am running a little long and late, I like the blue, blah, 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 blah. You know what? It's not going to be the thumbnail, but, <laughs> yeah, that Explorer, it just intrigues me so much. I would never buy it. I would play it if I saw it in the store. And if I fell in love with it, I might consider it. But <laughs> that is... That's my pick for the week. What's yours? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for tuning in. Sorry I was late this week. Uh, but, you know, life happens. So, uh, again, I'm Seabus Brian from Sanitarium. Check us out at sanitariumrockband.com. I'm working my best to get new music out the door. Uh, to be completely honest, I haven't been in the studio in quite some time. Uh, I've been having some mental health issues. <laughs> <laughs> so to speak. Uh but I'm I'm all right. Don't worry about it. I'm 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 fine. Uh so thank you for tuning in this week. <laughs> I just made it sound like a whole lot worse than it actually is. It's just you know, shit that happens in life sometimes. That's all it is. Uh yeah, don't worry about me. Uh so tune in next week for the next uh, mod collection update, which should be out next Wednesday. Uh again, sorry for being Two days late on that. Have a happy Friday. Go out and have a couple drinks with a couple pals. Uh, maybe go bowling with that uh, with that Explorer. <laughs> no, it's not there. What, did somebody buy the Explorer? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. Did I miss that? Whoops, wrong button. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, okay, somebody got it. Go find the person with that. You can probably see him in the, in, at the bowling alley. So, um, if you love the sound of my voice, which I'm sure you don't, and I'm sure everybody's already turned off by now, uh, and turned off by now. Uh, 
wander on over to uh, themashfiles.com. Uh, I do a podcast with my friend Seabus John. Uh, yeah, he stole my name. It's okay. Seabus John and I do a podcast about MASH. We're going through every episode, and uh, it, it's just a fun time. It's really it's a funny podcast. Uh, you get insights into uh, the MASH TV show. So if you're a fan of MASH, uh, you'll love it. If you're not a fan of MASH, it'll awaken your inner MASH. Anyway, enough's enough. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I am Seabus Bryan, and as always, rock on, and have a great weekend. Friday! Woo!